guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy. He is in his, sounds like his late 50s, and he shares his story about what's been going on for the last 10 to 12 years of his life, where he had the marriage from hell. And this story, guys, let me tell you, is quite the story. And even though it's long, as you can clearly see, it's worth your time. This is about a guy who, prior to meeting his now ex-wife, was really doing fantastic in life. He was in his mid-40s at the time when he met her. He had his own business, investments, had a lot of money, all that. He was on easy street, essentially. But then he met her. And let me tell you, it doesn't take long for things to go to hell in a handbasket. And her, she, he refers to the whole story as narc, is an absolute 100% textbook narcissist, as he unfortunately discovers. And I don't mean someone with a big ego like we have a lot today. I'm talking about someone that's pure evil. And all the crap she does to ruin him and everything is just unfreaking real. And he's sharing his story here to, to help guys not make the mistakes that he did. To share all the red flags and warning signs that he ignored or just wasn't aware of. And the mistakes he made to help other guys out there. And I really appreciate him doing this. Because he makes mistakes and yeah, he'll get called out on it. But he's learned. And now all these years later, he's back being single and rebuilding his life. And he's going to be fine. But it's one hell of a story. And just, if, if, if every guy out there heard stories like this, I guarantee it. Just even just one. They think twice about a lot of things they do. And this is why I do the channel and talk about the things I do and teach guys and help them out. Do my part to help dudes out there. Because this story, good freaking lore. But it's worth your time, guys, to hear this. So definitely pay attention to the whole thing. So grab a drink. It's a long one. So it starts off. He says, uh, hello, SSM. I'm a long-term fan. I've been waiting a long time to write to you. I couldn't write you early as I was involved in a four-year-long legal battle. And that recently wrapped up. I didn't agree to any confidential ag agreement so I can tell my story. I'm writing you to explain in detail the dangers of falling into the trap of a narcissist. When I say narcissist, I don't mean in engaging a self-centered, egotistical person. I'm talking about someone with a mental condition where they want to completely dominate you and destroy you. I want to tell you about how a devious and destructive person worms their way into your life, tricking you into trusting and loving them, while executing a long-term plan to strip you of everything from you, including your family, friends, wealth, and even your life. This pretty That pretty much sums it up, guys. And uh, you need to hear this. And maybe some of you guys can identify on some level. I was a blue pill nice guy. That's usually the victims here. Hardworking and friendly. I was in my mid-40s at the time with a high net worth, running my own consulting business in an IT management role for large banks and insurance companies. I had never been married, but had quite a few long-term relationships. I had it all, a beautiful house and car, hundreds of thousands in investments, well-traveled, great family and friends, over six feet tall, full head of hair, good looks and athletic muscular build. Man is prime, doing well for himself, beyond well for himself. And then look what brings it all down. This is why the knowledge I teach guys is so important for all guys, wherever you are. Over the years, I've also made a small fortune by monetizing my home renovation hobby. I put a huge amount of sweat equity in my properties, build new kitchens, bathrooms, decks, and redesigning spaces. I'm an expert in drywall, mudding, painting, plumbing, flooring, cabinetry, and even dabble a bit in electrical work. This eats a lot of my... Up this eats up a lot of my times at nights, weekends, and holidays. But I end up with beautiful properties for a fraction of the normal cost and often better quality than contractors would provide. This hobby had netted me over 500 k in the last 20 years. Awesome, brother. Good for you. And I bet you you love doing it. So in a way, it's not work. And you can take those profits and invest them and you all get the point. I started dating the narcissist who we'll call Narc and I quickly fell for her. She was everything that I was looking for. Beautiful, well-educated, good career path, great family, and family-oriented. Well, that's what she showed you. That was the hand she showed you. That's not what she was, that's not what she was really holding. I quickly found out that we get along really well and we were very S-word compatible. It was so great that I missed and ignored. It was so it was so great that I missed and ignored the red flags that she displayed. This is called love bombing, where the narc will do everything and whatever they can to to mirror you and make you fall for them. 
Yeah, they're pros. How many stories have I done where guys think they found the one? They think the stars align with we have so much in common and we click so well and she's so affectionate and blah, 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 blah. And then after a while, the real colors start coming out. This is why I told guys spend years getting to know your girl if you're even considering marriage. The first red flag was that she had no savings or investments. As she had finished her master's degree in her early 30s and had a habit of using all her earnings to pleasing herself. Dude, if you are a guy like you who works hard in growing your businesses, saving money, investing it, why in God's green earth would you get together with a gal who has nothing to herself, who pisses it all away and bullshit? You must realize, and I know he knows this now, but I got to say this, that she's going to do the same thing to your freaking money. Right there in the beginning, I tell you guys, pay attention to what she's like money-wise. Is she a spender or a saver? You get the point. I had naively believed that my wealth and great lifestyle would make any woman happy. And indeed, quite a bit early on in our relationship. We went on some very nice trips. I bought her a bunch of nice gifts. And we had great times with lots of dinners out. And good quiet times hanging at my place, cooking and spending time together. The narc always wanted to spend time with just the two of us or with her family. And rarely reluctantly opening herself up to my family and friends. There you go. Narcissists try to get people to distance themselves and cause a rift between the dude's family and friends. Look at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, right? Is it any accident that uh, the big division between him and the family and his friends and all the things he cared about? I mean, it goes on and on. Total, total narcissist. And this dumb fucker's falling for it. I don't feel bad for him. And I bet he's a good guy, but he's just completely foolish. Why do you think they really don't like her over there? I mean, think about it. I'm sure they're a-holes, the family, but there's more to it. They could see through her. He just didn't. And sooner or later, she's going to dump his ass. Anyhow, back to this story. We had a whirlwind romance with her moving part-time into my place about six months after we started dating. Smack! Six months? Six months? No, 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 no. We had a wonderful time together and quickly started planning our future marriage and kids. Six months, dude, doing all that? No, years. You got too much to lose. I know he knows this, but I got to point these out because this is a, a teaching channel. A builder friend of ours was just finishing a new house built in my neighborhood, and the er, at the urging of the NARC, we decided to purchase it using the 800000 of proceeds of my house sale and all my cash stock investments. Even with this large down payment, it was at the top of our mortgage affordability together. Who wouldn't want a luxurious 3,000 square foot newly constructed house in the middle of the city. However, the NARC promised to sign a prenup agreement as part of the purchase. After all, we are not even engaged yet. Oh my God. After everything you've done for yourself, and just because some hot piece of ass is giving you attention, bro. I and mean, I know it was more than just her looks. It was the way she made you feel and hope. And I'm sure in your mid 40s at that point, you obviously wanted kids and marriage and all that. And he said you're a blue pill, but good Lord. The builder even had a real estate investor line up to purchase my place, as it was a hot duplex in a great neighborhood close to the subway and shopping. In less than a day, I had sold my house and purchased an extremely expensive house with my girlfriend. And he writes, smack. Yeah, smack. I gave the prenup agreement over to the NARC, and she silently waited for two weeks to respond to it, usually staying at her parents' place. It was fairly worried agreement with the main provision being that if we separate in the first five years of marriage, that I would recover my down payment amount from the house, and we would split up all the other accumulated assets equally. Um, what does she contribute to the house? You said she had nothing to her name. What did she contribute? After two weeks, she responded by saying that she had already been by my house early that day and moved all her things out, and she was breaking off our relationship. There you go. We're done. She knows she has you wrapped around her fingers, so now she's going to pull, pull this tactic to get her way. Further, she pointed out that my house sale had just passed a date where I could cancel the sale, and I could also not get out of the purchasing the new house. She point, she pointedly note, noted that without the NARC, I, I would not have qualified for the loan to purchase the new house, and I'd face an immediate default and potentially lose my 100000 k cash purchase deposit. Smack. Yep. Bro, she knew what she was doing. I know you know this. My parents, who warned me not to purchase the house prior to their hiking trip abroad, were not around, and I could therefore not ask them to co-sign a mortgage or provide advice on how to deal with this. Your dad probably would have smacked you upside the head. 
The builder had also been notified by the NARC, and he called me later on the, in the afternoon asking if he should try listing the property to lessen my potential damages, as they'd already customized the house in the final stage of completing construction, with a build to complete in two months' time. I told him they were moving ahead with everything, and I would fix things up with the NARC. Gee, define fix things up with her. I decided to trash the prenup agreement. Smack! That's what she wanted. And promised the NARC that we would have a wonderful life together. And we should just keep focus on getting married next year and having kids in the future. We got back together and immediately started planning out at a wedding the next year. She knew exactly what she was doing, brother, and I know you know this. On the return from their trip, my parents and family asked me about my surprising news on my house sale and purchase and plans for marriage next year. You barely know her. There was quite a bit of trepidation, but everyone was happy that I was finally getting married and about the prospect of little ones joining our family. Well, it could be little half-demons from her. I was too sheepish to tell them the unusual circumstances of how my girlfriend had trapped me in the agreement, as I was ashamed, and I didn't want to cast the narc in a bad light. Well, dude, you obviously know she's there's something wrong here. Already you've seen a lot of red flags and the bullshit she's pulling. The problem is, guys, she could she could tell. Mid-40s, he's done well for himself, and he's obviously lonely. And she could see the... She could, she could, remember I tell you that, that, that the uh, the gals can pick up the nice guys, like the way the Terminator scans to find the victim, Sarah Connor, whatever. Scan the room, see? She scanned and found her nice guy. She had, she had, she had your number before you even opened up your mouth. In the year and a half prior to our marriage, I also missed that the NARC was a very high-conflict person. Oh, imagine that. Who frequently got into tangles with people at work, on the subway, in stores, and on vacation. In some cases, I convinced myself that this was due to her being a beautiful woman, as there was always many people who would eagerly engage her or show jealousy towards her. She also found conflict with many of my friends and family members, forcing me to distance myself from them. There you go. That's what they do. Cause a lot of drama and manipulate you to keep you distant from the people that care about you. And then they got you all to themselves and you depend on them. And they milk you for everything it's worth. The narc immediately targeted my mother as an untrustworthy person. Knowing that she had my best interest at heart. The narc claimed that my mother had purposely insulted her several times and that she would have to watch her closely. And did not want as much, much contact with her. As you can see, I was falling into narcissistic control and social isolation even before the wedding. Remember I mentioned Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? Think about it. So for socializing, this only left her family, as the ones who the narc felt comfortable with. So we progressively spent more and more time with them. While their family were seemingly nice people and somewhat generous, they always had highly support they were highly supportive of my fiance. They even intervened several times to coach me on how to make sure the narc is well cared for and would repeatedly ask me if I was a happy person. Remember, didn't you say she makes she has a decent job and makes decent money, but she always pisses away her money? Make sure she's cared for? Who the fuck is she, the Queen of Sheba? I really didn't understand why they would say these things, but was slowly realizing that the narc had crafted her own negative narrative of my character to them. In the future, my, her family would become the narc's flying monkeys or people who would hang together or gang together to do the dirty work for the narc. What else did I tell you about spending a lot of years with your girl to get to know her and her family? Right? And if you've got a good relationship with your family and friends and they all tell you your girl is garbage and trash and a user and all that, listen to them. By the time we were married, I was well under the narc's control with her family working cooperatively Co cooperatively to keep me in check. Good Lord, brother. Over the next two years, she got me to liquidate my other assets like an investment condo that I purchased years earlier, tax-sheltered investments, and used the money to purchase her a luxury SUV and a broken-down lakefront co cottage. So you're going to sell stuff that were investment property that would bring you a return you can make money off of to buy a luxury SUV which will depreciate in value Okay, and buy something else. And I'm, I'm willing to bet you that you mentioned tax sheltered prior to selling them, meaning probably she couldn't touch them. Now you sold them and buy a uh, lakefront property now becomes marital assets. Oh, brother. I'm glad you're sharing your story. This is going to help some dudes out there, but good freaking Lord. 
We again had to max out debt to purchase the cottage, with an arc promising that we, we would then prioritize debt repayment after the cottage renovation. Sure. Over the next two years, I renovated the cottage myself and turned it, turned it and our primary residence into beautiful oases. By liquidating my other investments, the NARC ensured that almost all my assets were now shared assets that would be equally divided in the event of a divorce. And she would receive the maximum value for the properties after I spent over three years renovating them on, on my nights, weekends, and holidays. The NARC also ensured that I had to use all my money for debt servicing, and I had to pick up any paid overtime work that was available to me due to our excessively high debt levels. It's just mind-boggling to me. After all those years, him building up his business and making a lot of money and doing the smart things, one piece of ass gives him unbelievable attention when he's lonely, and boom, look what happens here. I hope at least you're getting some good sex out of this. Good Lord. As soon as I had finished my three years renovation, it was ready to spend the summer regaining my strength and relaxing up at the cottage. The NARC had a new demand to renovate her sister's new house from top to bottom. After numerous fights, I reluctantly agreed to help her sister's build. Smack! She has your number. She knows how to get her way with you. She knew from the second she pulled that freaking stunt about you wanting to do the prenup. Remember about women of weakness and they, 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 a guy caves for one thing and they realize, I got this guy. What else can I get him to cave to? In the third year of our marriage, the narc knew that she squeezed me drive all my usefulness to her. Our debt was maxed out. I had finished all the renovation projects and we were going to slowly pay off our debt. In the previous years, the narc had changed from a loving fiancé to barely tolerable taskmaster task after our marriage. And now she moved to the final discard stage. You mean discard you? Because you're no longer useful. My father had helped the narc's sister land a good job at the business that he had previously owned prior to his retirement. This helped her get established after immigrating to the country, and she had difficulty finding a role in her field. While I was renovating her sister's house over six months, the narc was slowly taking out thousands of dollars from her business banking account into cash and depositing in her sister's bank account. Over six months, she had diverted over 20 k to her sister's bank account, all completely untraceable. She also was able to hide the, the missing amount of money by varying the monthly amounts and times her business bank accounts transfers over to our shared account. So immediately after my father getting the NARC's sister a professional job and I was renovating her house, she was busily working with the NARC to fraudulently move cash to her account. The, the flying monkeys were attacking. They certainly were. Bro, I'm sorry this happened to you, but you brought this on yourself. She's a piece of shit. We can all agree to her and her sister and the rest of the flying monkey family of hers. But, bro, you're a grown-ass man. But you're not the only guy in history that fell for this shit. So, but, again, I appreciate you sharing your story. And by the way, guys, oh, we're not even close to being done yet. At the same time, the narc also stopped sleeping with me and started to have an affair. Of course she did. She would hide the affair by manufacturing a large number of conflicts in our relationship and then disappearing every night and weekend to her family's place for various to get-togethers. I now know that it was just an excuse for her to run to her boyfriend's place. And I bet you her boyfriend's broke as, as all hell. I was physically, mentally, emotionally exhausted. I had invested a multi-million dollar fortune into our marriage and spent four years working to build a beautiful life for us. Well, thank God you didn't have kids with her. In the fourth year of our marriage, the narc started diverting ten, tens of thousands of dollars more from her business bank account, and I finally became aware of the financial gap in our finances. At the same time, the narc also radically increased her credit card spending, and over the final 18 months of our marriage, spent over $6,000 a month on self-spending, including a Rolex watch for herself. On my insistence and threats of divorce, I got her to attend a couple of different marriage counseling together. Yeah, I'm sure that went real well which the narc used as an opportunity to attempt to shame me and get the counselor to push me for change to resolve her complaints. And of course she did. However, when it was finally time to address the missing money and our huge credit card spending, her response was, when you figure out the relationship, then we can talk about money. Gaslighting. This answer floored both the counselor and myself, with the counselor angrily insisting that the narc answer the question as I had already spent the prior session acknowledging, apologizing, and coming up with solutions for the NARC's list of my deficiencies. Apologizing? Smack! Got nothing to apologize for. No, you can apologize to us for getting involved with her. 
We sat there fruitlessly in the counselor's office for the next 30 minutes in silence, waiting for the narc to respond to the question. So you're all just sitting there quiet, and she's staring at the wall being quiet. She was probably that little kid at the table when her parents told her to eat vegetables, just sat there, folded her arm, and just did a staring contest with her dad. I bet you. It says here, I left his office a broken man. Counseling was dead end. I had just wasted more months trying to get the marriage back on track. When I left the building, I couldn't walk and I had to sit down, choking down tears. The narc tried to encourage me to try to keep me on the hook. I now had a $3 million fortune from decades of hard work. That was a huge risk with no path to get the marriage back on track. Years earlier, uh, the narc has shown all my friends and family the door and barely tolerated my parents' rare visits. Further, when she was home, she would always pick up the phone to listen to my conversations with my one friend and parents. She would use this, use this to stay informed and collect intel on how to manipulate me to keep the marriage going, while she continued to, to route cash to her sister's bank account. Well, were you, did you pick up on this later on, or did you discover this in the process? And... I get you were so worn down. You felt everything was hopeless and your, obviously your friends and family were gone because she fucked it all up. But again, well, I can, I can feel bad for you on the one hand. On the other hand, it's like, dude, you were a grown ass man. I can't believe you fell for this shit. But a lot of guys do. But this is why, again, gentlemen, I do what I do and you must listen to these stories and pay attention to red flags and build yourself in a way that you're not going to let people like this in your life. And if you do, you can kick them to the curb and not think, this is as good as it's going to be, so, you know, I'll take her. The fifth year of our marriage was horrible. Like it hasn't been horrible, bro? The narc would invite me to get, to get together with her family every few months. And our whole family would no longer communicate with me or they would coach me on how to better treat the narc and whether I was happy or not. You mentioned earlier that her sister emigrated to this country. I have a very, very good idea. I mean, I don't know 100%, but I have a very good guess as to what background she is. I'd love to... I'm going to write you when we're done here and tell you I'm doing your story and you got to tell me what background she... I have a very gut, good gut feeling. Um, they all knew of her long-term boyfriend and one time even were even surprised to see that I was coming to a family gathering together. They knew she had a boyfriend at this point and you're still with her? The narc did this to just put on the appearance of us still being married. But for the last two and a half years of our marriage, we had lived completely separate, sexless lives in different bedrooms, and she was permanently out with her boyfriend. The hole was getting deeper, bro. Why don't you just divorce her at this point? I know you're going to take a hit, but she's just making it worse the longer you're with her. The narc also frequently fought and pushed me to ask and force my parents into giving me their inheritance early, as they were in their late 70s and 80s. I ignored these requests and know that this was the only time that she would engage me. Her message was clear. If you want any kind of relationship with me, get the money from your parents. Dude. Prior to the divorce, my parents called the narc really concerned about our marriage, trying to reason with her, with the narc screaming at them and saying that she would never again spend any time with them. Dude, it's one thing that you were letting her treat you like this, but you let her treat this with your parents like this? What the fuck's the matter with you? I gotta say that. Come on. Back to Prince Harry. While... He, I'm sure, probably is a good guy to people. He's a fucking bonehead for Meghan Markle and putting up with her and all the crap he did, and he got what was coming to him. My father then called up the narc sister who he had helped, helped her with her career, only to find a similar response from her and her handling the phone over to the screaming narc. This is the thanks your father gets. Prior to the call, I had already booked a 10-day vacation to the Caribbean with the narc as a last-ditch effort as a couple weeks' time. Last ditch effort for what? To keep this loving, wonderful woman in your life? You should be kicking her to the curb as fast as you could. I stayed silent and started to make plans for the divorce. Thank the Lord. It's about goddamn time, brother. I came back after the vacation and went through the process to secure a lawyer and initiate the separation. This was still very hard as I was losing a huge portion of my fortune and I still deeply loved the pre I still deeply loved the pre marriage make believe person. Smack the, the, the pre-marriage make-believe person was make-believe. Big Bird is more fucking real than what she, what she was, and she is. The, her real colors is what, you're, what you see right now in this moment. I initiated my divorce to my smiling wife. She'd been listening to my telephone conversations and knew exactly what was coming. Why weren't you using your cell phone? Why were you talking on the house phone? And she was well prepared for what came next. 
she gleefully informed her family and with a skip in her step, left the house to go out. Yeah, because she's going to clean up. The next week, with the usual politeness, unusual politeness, she asked me to explain how to calculate her business taxes that I've been preparing for her during our marriage. Trying to make the separation as amicable as possible, I told her what she had to do and even sent her a detailed step-by-step -step instructions. I didn't talk to the NARC and waited while she, we get her lawyer engaged. The NARC had spent years planning the divorce and immediately started executing on the plan after getting the tax instructions. Dude, she had everything planned up when she met you. To, to rope you in, milk you dry, and then the divorce. She wanted me to off myself so she could take everything. The narc first started calling the police every week or two to accuse me of, well, a lot of bad stuff, guys. You can use your imagination. I can't say it. YouTube might flag this video. And the police report, she claimed that I had threatened to do things to her and her mom, and that I threatened to do other awful things, illegal things, that I can't mention here, but just you get the point. She brought her boyfriend over to show him off to me two weeks after our separation date, and the two of them sat in the family room facing me, filming me on their phones for two hours until I finally called the police, who came by an hour later. I understood that the boyfriend dumped her shortly after this as he wasn't interested in a relationship with her. Of course he dumped her. She was with a Chad or Tyrone. She was milking you. He's milking her. And now he's kicking her to the curb. The narc did the same thing with her other family members camping out in the house and filming me trying to get an angry reaction out of me. She was trying to do this to get me kicked out of the house. The narc would scream and yell at me and she'd go to the neighbor's house to tell him about me. Several of them got, told her good riddance and that she was moving out. The police came by and after the first or second time they knew the lay of the land. I had a chance to tell them my side of the story and they could see that the house was clean and undisturbed and that the narc did, did not have a mark on her. The police would assign the same two officers for virtually every visit so they would keep they could monitor and manage the different incidences. The police started kicking her out of the house on each visit, making her go to her parents' or boyfriend's place. If she was smarter, she'd leave marks on her and things like that, but clearly she wasn't that smart. She would return several times a week to scream at me, load up the SUV with everything she could grab, even taking my degrees and diplomas, my business articles and corporation, watch case and spare links, my old CD collection, other items. She came by several times and took all the toilet paper in the house. Oh, she can take the other things, but don't you dare touch a man's toilet paper. She'd find, all the, she'd find all the rolls even when I hid them all over the place in the house. I had to finally put them in high up in the garage and hide the ladder around the side of the house. The narc started taking everything out of the house and loading up her SUV with huge amounts of our, our chattels. After five weeks of separation, the narc had stripped everything of a small and medium size from the house. Then she broke in my locked filing cabinet and stole my platinum wedding ring, $450 in cash, medication, and all my financial files, backup drives, and other valuables. Dude, why weren't you stopping her? Why weren't you putting your valuables, knowing that she was doing this, someplace safe that she couldn't get to? I mean, I have lots of questions. There, I have so many questions. I can't even begin to... <laughs> but clearly, you were so worn down. I mean, at least you were going through the divorce process. I told you guys this is crazy. And you guys out there want to get married, remember this. This launched a series of lawyer engagements with me calling her lawyer on his cell phone that night to yell at him about the theft. My lawyer was on vacation at the time. After this, we initiated a court hearing to try and recover the items and secure a restraining order. Now you're doing a restraining order? Prior to the court debate, the narc denied taking anything from the lock cabinet in two legal letters. However, she came to the house and was yelling and laughing about her having my medication. As a precaution, on every visit, I called my parents and would leave them on the phone to provide a witness account of what she, what she had said. Why didn't you set up security cameras? My father provided sworn testimony that the narc admitted to stealing my medication, but that was not enough for the judge to issue an order. This cost me $15,000 in legal fees. This continued for six months until we were back in court for the third time. By this time, the police had been into the house more than 10 times. The narc had also moved out, in the house, out of the house and the lawyer's and police insistence for her safety months earlier. Her possessions had been moved out earlier, and she stopped contributing to the shared carrying costs for the house and cottage. I was finally able to get the judge to make an agreement with the narc's lawyer that she could no longer visit the primary residence. The narc, infuriated by this, was screaming at the judge and her lawyer, saying that she could not stop coming by the house. 
Her lawyer shouted over her, shut up, shut up, shut up, until she stopped. While the judge would not issue a restraining order, he was able to get an agreement with the lawyer to keep her away. I still could not change the locks in the house. I still could not change the locks in the house or I would be kicked out of the house. After all, this was considered to be emotional abuse. I was never able to feel safe in the house and all she could do is come in at any moment. I was also successful in securing a court order for her bank and credit cards records for the last three years of our marriage. These records are always required and these have to be provided without a court order voluntarily. Needing a court order for this really raised the judge's ire and this was the second judge to yell at the narc. You do not want to piss off the judge. We also reached an agreement on spousal support. Oh my God, you got to pay this crazy bitch. Where I would pay her over one grand a month to the NARC for the next three to six years. Thankfully, she earned, she earned close to what I make, so it was not a large amount or a larger amount. Normally, spousal support is paid into a tax free lump sum payment, but if the receiving party refu refuses this, it'd be paid monthly over a number of years. By taking the payout in a monthly payment, the NARC was able to continue her terrorizing of me. For instance, I would have to wait three to six years and then would need a court order to, to sever the payments, which would cost about eight grand legal fees. And if I apply too early or if the NARC fights me, she may extend the support payments further. Uh, further, it makes it very hard for me to secure a mortgage as I have to report that I have a monthly spousal support and payment that decreases my net disposable income. The spousal support payments is a taxable benefit for her and a tax write-off for me. Guess what? She reports that she didn't receive any spousal support on her taxes, so I have to have a year-long battle with the government tax agency to prove that I paid the money to secure my wife's offs, offs for the prior three years' payments. This is still not resolved with the tax authority after three years. So you're paying her, and you're allowed to take that as a tax deduction on your taxes, but they're saying, wait a second, she didn't report that on her taxes. So I can see the drama there. After a separation, I notified the NARC that I intended to purchase the primary residence and provide her half of the proceeds of the value of the property. The NARC fought tooth and nail not to let me purchase the house. I had to take the NARC to court twice to force this through, and almost a third time after the sale. Remember how he had moved in with her in six months and rushed into the marriage and was going to do the prenup before they were married and she pulled that bullshit? Remember all that? These were all the signs in the beginning. I'm not done yet, guys. Keep listening because this is educational. Our hero will end up okay in the end, but good fucking Lord. Remember this, gentlemen, before you think your girl's different and she's amazing and the stars are aligned, spend years getting to know her, her family, what she's like with money, a communication, all that. You get the point. It continues. On our first court appearance for the sale of the house, the judge was exasperated to find that the NARC and her lawyer were insisting that I pay the average amount that five different real estate agents had quoted for the estimated listing price of the property. The standard was to get a real estate assessor who would professionally evaluate the property and uh, contrast it against recently sold like properties in the same neighborhood. Needless to say, the average value of the, of the realtors was 300 k above the eventual sale price. Of course it was. The judge became so heated at their dodged and unrelenting attempt at a scam that he was shouting them down for over half an hour in the court. It was so loud that the police who run the weapons scanning station looked in the court proceeding to see if everything was okay. The narc has no shame and will try anything to get an advantage because she's a freaking sociopath. Enjoys all this. After professional real estate assessment, the NARC refused to take half of the real estate assessed value, so went back to court where the judge ruled that the house had to be sold publicly. My only option would be to match whatever the highest bid was. So we listed it and both the NARC and the realtor did not want me to purchase the property as they would not get their commission. After quite a bit of maneuvering by the realtor and a, th a small three-way bidding war, the house was sold for 100 k under the assessed value. Aha! The idiot NARC had been forced to, to accept an offer that was 100 k less than my, other several, my offer several months earlier. She then tried to refuse her acceptance of the offer, and I had to bring in a real estate attorney and was able to force through the deal with my divorce attorney. It took me a year of legal battles to get the house. For two years, I scrutinized the NARC's banking and credit card statements and found that in the last 18 months of her marriage, she had done the following. Withdrawn over $150,000 in cash from her business banking account and one of the transactions being 62 grand in a single withdrawal. 
She has spent over $114,000 in cash on her credit card, and she was purchasing numerous things and then turning around and selling them online or getting gift cards from the stores. You're not her first victim, brother. One of her credit card purchases was for $3,000 for a California-based counseling service for women, women empowerment, a what I like to call bitch school. I think she did just fine without it. But I guess when you need to max out your bitch skills, that's where you go. Yes, there is such a thing called as bitch school. In response to our inquiries and the following missing 150k of cash withdrawals, with 100,000 being withdrawn in the last six months of our marriage, the narc changed her story several times over the next two years. She initially started that she spent the money during the marriage and later said that she brought the money, the money home, put it in the laundry room cabinet where both we had access to it and we both spent it. She's telling you she uh, withdrew a combination of $250,000, put it in cash in the cupboard in the laundry room, and you all just spent it? Sure. From my analysis of the bank records, I was trying to see if there were any bank transfers that would point to a receiving account. But of course, the NARC had already covered her tracks by taking the money in cash. She almost got away with it. If I couldn't provide where the mo- pr- prove where the money went, then there was no proof of what happened with the money. I remembered in the second year of our separation that she had another shared bank account that she held with her sister. I threatened to get a court order for it if she didn't provide the bank, bank records for this account. The NARC reluctantly provided it, after, and after review, there were no large cash deposits to the account. The account was not used in the last one and a half years of our marriage. About a year after we got in the NARC to produce the large cash withdrawal records, all showing just the cash denominations of the monies, on a Tuesday night at one in the morning, I effing found it. I've been looking at all the money going out of the account, but there was one record with a cash deposit going into a business bank account one and a half years prior to our separation for uh, $15,248. This exactly matched a cash withdrawal from the shared account with her sister on the same date. Further, this cash was moved from another investment account into a shared account on the same date. Good freaking Lord. Any of you accountants and tax people out there are probably in a field day trying to with all this. On our investigation into the investment account, we found that the investment account was owned by the NARC sister. From there, they had to disc- disclose the investment account information and the funding account, which was also the NARC sister's account. The NARC had just withdrawn over 20 k in cash from her business banking account several months earlier, and now we see that she uh, filled it up, the, the 15 k back into her business account via her sister's personal banking investment account. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, making it as confusing as fucking possible and hard to trace. We also found that her sister had no money at the time because she had just bought her house and could not afford to renovate or furnish it. Recall that I was the one who renovated her house for her at the time. She had eight different term, term deposit accounts set up. Why would someone with no money have eight different term deposit accounts? These were investment accounts that would be locked for a short time, short-term loan period. So what was happening with the NARC sister was depositing the money to her bank account and then moving the, these trenches of money to different term investment accounts each time there was a large deposit. This also helped to keep track and, se- and segregate her money from her sister's money. He says it is extremely difficult to bring in a third party into a divorce battle, but we had enough evidence to continue seeking disclosure, always with a threat of court orders if they did not comply. After a four-year legal battle, I finally won. The narc was also lying to her lawyer about her financials. Don't lie to your lawyer, guys. Listen to your lawyer. Don't lie to your lawyer. So her lawyer provided some bank records showing her investment account with a balance of 63 k more than what should have been in the account after our separation date. This would allow me to get court orders for the corresponding bank records and all the traceability of the financials of where that cash came from. It was over. The judge reviewed the evidence. The narc's lawyer embarrassingly stated several times they wanted to settle. Oh, now they want to settle, huh? I had to come down with the settlement offer a little bit at the judge's insistence. But after a three-hour session where the judge hammered the narc, we finally agreed to a $90,000 settlement. After spending over $80,000 in legal fees and four years, it is a small and satisfying victory. Bro, I'm glad you were feeling good in that moment, but there's no victory in all this horrible shit that you went through and your family went through and all this good fucking lore. Well, the victory is you're still alive. The victory is you're all the wiser and you will be able to have rebuild. But I'll come to that at the end. 
The Narc had one final card to play. Of course she does. In the settlement agreement, we agreed that the Narc would pay for the divorce and that I would pay half her legal fees. The Narc has now dis dismissed her lawyer and is not pro proceeding with the divorce. So now if I want to get divorced, she would not be obligated to pay half the cost. And I would also have to get a process server to serve her documents in order to finalize the divorce, greatly increase my legal costs. From a legal perspective, we had no financial legal ties, so at my lawyer's advice, I'm just going to leave it as is and we'll never get remarried in any case. So are you telling me, technically speaking, you're still married, but you have no legal ties to each other? You're always going to be connected to her some way, somehow? Good fucking lord. But if your lawyer's telling you, under the circumstances, that's the best way to go about, because you're never going to get married again... Uh, between the settlement and legal costs, she cost me $1.6 million for a marriage that lasted five years and four months, where she had a boyfriend for the last two and a half of them. The lawsuit took four years so far and is still not completely resolved. I wasted 12 years of my life and a fortune to this disgusting narcissist. Experts agree that approximately 7% of the population are narcissists, with some estimated at up to 25% of people. I believe it's higher than 7%. Be, gentlemen, be extremely careful in evaluating your relationship partner and friends as there are a lot of people out there that are serious mental issues. Try asshole issues. I now sit at home here alone, quiet and content, a feeling of safety and calm that I, I so value. It's been almost seven years since I had you know what, and I've yet to enter the dating market. Well, dude, nobody can blame you. I spent the last few years trying to rebuild, to build and cultivate friendships, trying to get out and enjoy life. I'm relearning how to trust again and doing my best to put this awful period of my life behind me. It has been very hard to focus on my contracts over the past several years, and this has cost me employment opportunities impacted my working success and references. I'm rebuilding my finances and slowly getting my debt down to a reasonable level. Guys, marriage is extremely risky. You're telling us. There is a reason why men kill themselves four times the rate of women. Be super careful in your choices, vet your partner as carefully as you can, test their mettle, and take years with your partner before ever getting considered, even considering getting married. Yes, and this guy's learned the hard way, and he, he earned his right to tell you all what not to do, because he fucking did it. This is what I tell you guys all the time. You can think I'm a dick, and not like me, because I do videos in my car and wear sunglasses, and maybe, maybe I'm a little arrogant. But when you have real-life horror stories here telling you the same thing, okay, now you can take me seriously if some of you don't like me. I know there are people here that watch me because they hate me and want to give me thumbs-downs and talk shit in the comment section, but most of you guys do like me. Uh, pay attention to red flags and address them. Don't be too nice and accommodating to your partner. You both have roles to fulfill. Make sure she's willing to cater to, your, to her roles. Pay attention to small things like seeing if she brings you a glass of water without asking when you're working outside. See if she helps you with things without asking. If she wants to be treated like a princess or has unreasonable expectations. Avoid women who, the following. What dinner on the first date? What I tell you about the first drink rule? The ones that lose their shit because you won't take them out to dinner first date? Red flag. Have tattoos. Big attitude. Long fingernails. Talk a lot about wanting to travel, wanting you to pay. Have outsized egos. Single MOMs, you will always be the lowest priority below the pets and have to supply work and money, etc. So there you go, guys. That's a 45-minute video at this point. Thank you for sticking around. So this is the horror story here, and I wasn't fucking kidding. But you know what? This guy made tons of mistakes, and you all know them. I don't need to address them again, but he's lived to tell the tale. And he has taken the time to share this story here and to write it all out to help guys out there. So if anything good can come from this... He can help other dudes out there. So I'm sure there's going to be some guy out there that this may help save him from marrying somebody like this or get out of a marriage or something like this. But guys, there's so much to learn. Take your time. Your relationship, you guys. Spend years with her. If you're going to get married, because a lot of you are, whether you want to admit it or not, years. Her family, her friends, what she's like with money, communication. Does she do things for you like you mentioned there? Avoid all the types he talks about here. Trust your gut. Pay attention to your red flags. Make sure you're the same with money. Look, he was a guy in his mid-40s kicking ass and taking aims with his businesses and his investments and money. But because he had a weakness and she spotted it, because he obviously was probably lonely, wanted a wife, kids, all that, the dream, she exploited him. And he made a lot of mistakes, but you know what? Here he is now. He's got a second chance. 
I'm still curious about whether he's still married to her at this point. But brother, you got a second chance. All right? You learn a lot. Don't get ever fucking get married again. And all the wealth you lost, you were smart enough to build up the first time. You can build up a second time. Live beneath your means, like I said. Keep doing what you're doing. You're obviously great skills at the, the, the refurbishments of houses and all that stuff. Get back to that. Invest your money. Pay down those debts. And in years' time, you can be wealthier than you were before. You can do it. You know how to do it, so do it again. And for all the sacred and holy, avoid, be very, if you if you date in the future, it can be 20 years for you even look at another woman after all this shit, and who can blame you? Get a dog or a couple cats like me. Remember everything you learned. Don't let it happen again. And try your best to rebuild the relationships that were severed because of her and you. Okay, it wasn't just her who was severing the relationship with your family and friends. You did too. You got to take, and I know you do. I know you're taking accountability for your actions, and I respect that. But you got to rebuild those ties, because in the future, old Prince Harry is going to be trying to rebuild ties with his family, and good fucking luck with Harry there. But we be very. I mentioned this before the Prince Harry, Meghan Markle thing. Pay attention to everything, guys. It is just it's exactly like a narcissist situation. No fucking joke. But bro. I wish you the best. I really do. And let me know down the road how you're doing. I really want to hear about this. And if something happens to her, like a freaking, I don't know, she drives her car off a cliff, or I don't know what something happens to her, let me know. We'd all like to hear about that because, sadly, she's just going to go find another victim. You know, I don't know how old she is. I'm thinking that she's probably probably in her 40s at this point. It's going to be a lot harder for her. But she'll find some sucker, some older guy with money, and it'll happen all over again. I really do. Uh, she definitely has deserves a lot coming to her and her family. But bro, I wish you the best. All right, guys, that was it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. I know you want to tell him a new one, but also let's give him some praise for being brave enough to share this story here and wish him all the best. And guys, you're in an experience with someone like this? Let's hear about it in the comments section. We're here to help each other out. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.